go a little something like this. Welcome to Talk About Your Period, the podcast where we do just that, talk about periods. I'm your host, Karen Dauber, and each episode, I speak with fellow menstruators about how their menstrual cycle has impacted their lives. In a world that tells us to hide our pads and tampons, we're speaking out together to end the stigma. No one should feel ashamed to talk about their period. After all, it's just blood. Hello, hello, hello. I am so happy to be here today with you guys, and I am so happy and it's such a pleasure to have my dear friend Nikki Camp here today. Nikki, how are you doing? Hello, I am doing so good. I'm so excited to be here. I'm so happy you're here today, Nikki. It's been a long time coming and I know that um, you know you have been helping me out through the behind the scenes and cheering me on. So it's just really exciting to have you on my podcast finally. Woo! <laughs> I know. I'm so excited. Well, Nikki, thank you again for coming today. Nikki is an artist and she's also an art teacher. Um, A little bit about how we know each other. So Nikki and I both taught together in Taiwan. We taught at the same school for two years. And then Nikki went home to America for a year. And then she realized that Taiwan is the best country in the world and decided to come (laughs) back and just at a different school um, in the same city. So we got to spend my last year in Taiwan together, which was just such a pleasure. And um, we have so many fond memories together from our time in Taiwan. Um, So thank you, Nikki. I'm so happy you could be here today. I am so happy to be here. And then you left me in Taiwan and I miss you. I'm sorry. (laughs) (laughs) I know I miss you so much, but thank goodness for FaceTime and Zoom and all this. We can keep in touch. We we definitely talk all the time still. So just like when you left me, you went back to America. So (laughs) (laughs) yes. (laughs) Well, today, before we begin, I do have to say, um, that we do not want you using this podcast as medical advice to treat any medical condition, either in yourself or others, including but not limited to patients that are your, you are treating. I am not a doctor. Um, we may offer information based on our own experiences, but it's not medical advice. Please consult your own physician for any medical issues that you may be having. Nikki, let's just jump right into it. I know actually a lot about Nikki's periods, and I think we'll definitely uh, get into that today. Uh <laughs> I probably know more about your yes. period than I know a lot of my friends, um, but I'm excited to just talk about it and normalize some of the stories that you're interested in sharing today. So the question I always ask is, if you could describe your relationship with your period in one word, what would it be, Nikki? Oh my goodness. Well, I've thought about this one a lot, and I think it would have to be the word revenge. Um, <laughs> I don't know why. My body takes revenge out on me every month. I don't, I don't think I did anything to make it mad, Um, but it feels very personal (laughs) Um, for someone to be in so much pain and unable to do things and fear about going places. It feels very personal. And I'm like, body, what did I ever do to you? You know? <laughs> oh, Nikki, I'm so sorry to hear that. But honestly, from what I know about your period, it, it checks out. It checks out. Nikki has tremendously tough time on her cycle. And, you know, I know you're not alone in that. There's a lot of people who are who are every day just going through life, going to work, going to school and having to just pretend like they're not deeply suffering and i know that you're one of those people you have to try to push through it so yes wow like us my question is like was your period always like this did it get worse over time um or was it just from the get-go oh my goodness i uh you know i just remember first of all being mortified when i got my period because like you are bleeding then every month. But in addition to having to bleed, like my period did from the beginning, it was painful with big clots. And I remember um, in high school puking in my high school office because I was in so much pain and I was trying to go home and I just couldn't make it. (laughs) So yeah, it's from, from when I was really young it was just really difficult I would cry at home and be like I can't go to school this is too bad and um my mom told me your period should never stop you from doing anything 
but it just, that just wasn't true for me. Um, I just would be in so much pain that I just couldn't move. <laughs> um, and I just had to focus on my breathing to make it through. Yeah. Wow. That's so intense. You know, it's interesting how mothers and daughters or parents and children can have such different uh, cycles, you know? Um, I mm -hmm. had a similar experience in the sense that my mom and I had, I, on the, it's almost like the opposite of an issue. Like my mom had a much tougher time with her period and her cycle than I did. Um, and so it sounds like it's like the same for you and your mother. It sounds like you guys don't have similar cycles or if, if you guys did, uh, you know, maybe, maybe at the time she didn't know how intense you know, the other mm -hmm. pain that you were dealing with was, that's so tough. Right. Yeah. I remember, you know, years ago when we first met and you had described to me what your periods were like. And when you told me like you puke almost every cycle, that's so intense. Um, mm -hmm. That's something I've never had to experience. I didn't, and honestly, I didn't even realize it could be that bad. Like I didn't realize there were a lot of people like incapacitated every month um, by their period, the pain. And I think you've also shared with me, you have like pain in your legs. Um, and it's yeah. Hard to walk. Like for me and, and things have changed over the years, but, um, for me, like having pain shooting down my legs all the way into my toes, up my back, my boobs would hurt. Um, I'd feel nauseous. Uh, and like that's, varied over the years um it's been worse some years it's been better some years um but but really it's it's just it's really hard to deal with <laughs> um yeah so you know just dealing with the pain is very difficult sometimes and like not able to go to work or um, go to events with friends or you know just a variety of things um being afraid to go swimming or eat cold food. Uh, I was in, I, I'm currently still in Taiwan, but for a while my, my periods were getting worse and um, I had like, my stomach felt hard and they were getting really heavy. I couldn't go an hour without like having to change my pad or use the bathroom without just like overflowing everywhere. And I was like, I can't, work like this my classes that I teach are longer than an hour and if I can't make it longer than an hour like this is going to affect my life more than it already is <laughs> so um I first I went I was in the U.S. and I went to the doctor there and they just told me oh you need birth control and like I've, got, I've had to I've tried to manage pain with birth control before and it just doesn't work for me because i not really trading the pain and I'm adding headaches into the mix when I am taking birth control. So it really just makes my life more uncomfortable. However, um, the doctor, like I had tried it before the doctor told me, Oh yeah, like you should try birth control again. Like, but I really didn't want to do it, but I was like, well, this is what the doctor is saying. I'm going to try it again. And, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. And, you know, sure enough, I had headaches again. Um, but then I was moving back to Taiwan and I was like, well, I'll just go see doctors in Taiwan. And I did. And within five minutes, they did an ultrasound and found out I had a giant tumor. Yeah. And that was causing my periods to be so heavy. So it was like the size of a softball and like sticking out of my stomach. It was crazy. Yeah. So I ended up having that moved which was really good um and you obviously had like front row tickets for that show because uh <laughs> you stayed with me in the hospital <laughs> i sure did i sure did <laughs> that was yeah i learned a lot in that experience because like i learned it was heavy because of the tumor and i also learned that i had endometriosis which made a lot of sense with the pain that i experience and be because I had they they removed the endometriosis they removed the tumor because I had those things taken care of my periods have gotten a lot better but what I what I also learned is endometriosis can grow back so like since then I have had some very very painful periods also so um 
I wouldn't say that that my my whole life, every period I've ever had, like leaves me incapacitated. However, a majority of them have, and it just it just makes me frustrated that I that I am you know I have to live my life with almost like this curse, you know. Yeah. Oh my gosh, Nikki. I know it's been like a really tough journey for you and I can't help but think, you know, someone like you who goes through so much bleeding, um, as you've described, like bleeding through entire maxi pads within an hour, um, Mm -hmm. and so much pain, almost unpredictable pain. Is it going to, you know, be so painful I can't walk or is it just going to be mild? Do you feel a sense of anxiety? before you have your period do you have like maybe like a week before your period is that a tough time for you well it's it's actually kind of funny because my body it gives me warnings like it's like hey you're gonna start getting cramps a week early because now you know you're gonna get your period so I'm like oh no I know and I use a I use an app on my phone so I do know when it's coming but then my body just sends me a little bit of an extra reminder like if the if the cramps on my period aren't enough during my period, I also get them before. Um, but I remember when I was working at a different school, I had some friends that really liked to go camping. Um, and every time my friend would invite me to go camping, it would be when I was on my period. And I am not going camping on my period because of how bad it is, you know. And so just being able to like go do fun things with friends. I don't want to have anxiety about going places, but I do because like, of course I want to go spend time with friends or go on trips or that kind of thing. But I just can't do it if I'm worried about being an excruciating pain, not at home or um, like having so much blood that I'm just unable to deal with it in a comfortable way, as comfortable as it can be. So definitely i've i've had to come to terms with i'm not going to or i can't let myself feel that heavy anxiety about going and doing things with people i just have to say i'm sorry i can't go because it just it makes me feel too crazy to be worried the whole time if i do decide to go Yeah. And I remember just from spending time together and traveling together in Taiwan, you know, it did seem like, you know, a lot of your schedule is really run around your period just because it is so difficult um, for you. It's such Mm an intense time. And, you know, finding places where you can appropriately change a pad and discard of a pad and wash your hands. I mean, certainly when it comes to like camping, that would be of a concern, right? Um, Right. And you know, of course, some people feel like the need to be discreet is important. But even if you, let's say there is no desire to be discreet, it's still, you know, it's messy and you need to clean it and, you know, clean your hands and make sure everything's discarded nicely. It's just, it's a myriad of issues on top of the pain, you know, that could get in the way of you enjoying your time. So I'm really sorry that you had to deal with that, Nikki. It sounds like a really heavy burden that you have to carry with you. Well, thank you. And I know that I've, I know that I've expressed to you when we've been hanging out, uh, when, you know, we would go and do things in Taiwan and, and I, and I would say, Karen, I'm really excited to hang out with you, but I just don't want to bleed on your car. (laughs) (laughs) I forgot. (laughs) Yes, you would say that. And you were, you were so kind and you were like, Nikki, you can bleed on my car anytime. <laughs> like, okay. I will say I'm a pretty good friend to have when you're bleeding everywhere. Yes. You know, uh, I will, I'll, I'll handle it pretty so well. So thank you. Because <laughs> I like, of course I have good friends, but, but I don't know how many friends would tell me bleed on my car. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you know me. I'm, I feel like it's no skin off my nose. It's just blood, you know, it's fine. You know, there's there's certainly worse things to happen. Yeah, you can bleed on my car any day, Nikki. Yes. Thank you. Oh, well, I just, I just feel like, you know, 
when you're having issues with that much blood, I don't want to add to the anxiety of, you know, it sounds like, I mean, leaking and staining things is already stressful enough, no matter how old you are. But then, you know, when you have to worry about like a friend's property or, you know, it's, it's adds an extra level of anxiety. But so I just didn't want to make you feel any more anxious than you probably were already feeling, you know, it's, it's no big deal. You can just clean it up and just clean it up. Well, Nikki, I'm sorry to hear that, like, uh, it's just been really tough on you. And that's why I was really looking forward to having you on today because, you know, my first two guests have relatively standard or light periods and light symptoms. And I know that's not the case for you. And I think there's going to be a lot of people who listen to this who either have no idea that you're suffering like this all the time, and they might be able to have a little bit more compassion towards you and others who go through this. But I think there's going to be a lot of people who listen to this who do have issues similar to yours or do have endometriosis or PCOS. And, um, you know, I'm sure having something so painful um, when other people are having very easy breezy, seemingly uh, easy period cycles, it, it might feel a little isolating or lonely. Or as you put it, what did I do <laughs> to deserve <laughs> What this? did I do? <laughs> <laughs> why oh, <man>. me <laughs> why me that's what I, I ask know. sometimes I'm like why me <laughs> oh I'm sure and like oh but I'm sure lots of people ask that about things <laughs> yes yes I think so too and you know I know it was about it'll be I guess it'll be two years in September when we when they found your tumor um yeah did you feel a sense of relief when they found the tumor uh, you know, actually, it's kind of funny. I I went, a friend took me to a clinic and they they told me, oh, like, well, actually, they told my friend first that, that I had a tumor. I was like, I didn't know what was going on because they were all speaking in Chinese. Uh, but I had a feeling that it wasn't like my uterus wasn't like normal looking. Um, and then my friend told me, okay, you have a tumor but they said it's big. So they're like sending you to a specialist. And I was like, Oh, well then that's interesting. Um, and, but it like, I guess it's it, once I got it and I heard about it, I think it's more common than people talk about for sure. Uh, because then once I started talking about it, I learned of a, like other people in my life that also had the same experience as me. Maybe they didn't have like the exact same thing, but maybe they had like a few like tumors and there's different kinds with different names. But honestly, when I, when I heard about it, I was like, do you think I could just keep it inside of me? <laughs> and I, went, I remember that. <laughs> I went and one of my, one of my neighbors is, uh, well, not anymore, but I had a neighbor who was a, a nurse and uh, I went up to her house. We were good friends. And I told her like, I, I got a, I found out I have a tumor in my uterus. Do you think I can keep it? <laughs> she she was like, no. no. You can't keep it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she is so straightforward too. Like she was like, absolutely oh, yes. not, Nikki. <laughs> You are so hilarious. I remember just that. I remember you telling me that. Just being like, well, maybe we could just keep it there. Who knows? <laughs> it's not really doing anything. How bad could it be? <laughs> oh, just I making... already knew it was bad. <laughs> yes. Uh, all I know is. I just knew is... what it was. <laughs> exactly. And of course, like, I know when you told me you had a tumor. I kind of figured it was benign. Like, I, I, I don't know. I had a sense that it was benign and it was most, I had a, I had a feeling, you know, like, oh, this is probably why her periods are so rough. But certainly when we found out yes. before you scheduled your surgery that it was benign, that's when we all kind of took like a, okay, we're good, you know. Um, and yeah, I was just curious if, you know, if that had impacted how you kind of like viewed your periods, because it kind of like, it certainly was kind of like the missing piece of the puzzle, puzzle of, hmm, why is this so, so bad? Um, right. And I, I know when you got your surgery, um, you know, I was, I was speaking with the, I took care of Nikki at the doctor for context. So she that did. Was... She was wonderful. She spent three <laughs> days or something like that in the hospital with me. <laughs> 
Well, it's like the least I could do. You know, with COVID, Nikki's mother couldn't come into the country. Taiwan's completely locked off, and I'm a stay-at-home mom, so... My husband brought my son with him to work, and I stayed at the hospital with Nikki, and some other friends did as well. So we all kind of took turns yeah. helping Nikki out. But, you know, being in a foreign country, you don't um, know the language, and you're getting a major surgery, it can be really intimidating. So it was a pleasure to be there with you, Nikki. And I remember, you know, I was there with her the morning of her surgery. <laughs> Yes, I wouldn't have been able to do it without you, seriously. <laughs> oh, well, you're so sweet. Well, I'm just happy that I was available, you know, to be able to support you during that time because I know it was really scary for you. Yeah. And um, talking with the doctors before and after the surgery with as much Chinese as I know, like my Chinese is like, mm -hmm. okay, but this is like medical jargon and lingo is tough. Um, that combined with their limited English, we made it work. But um, I remember the doctor showing me the pictures of Nikki's uterus. <laughs> like right away, like pictures of me cut open. Yeah, no literally. warning. And she was <laughs> no warning, and Nikki was like still knocked out at this time. Like they were just telling me it was successful. Yeah, she was gone, and they're just you know showing you got me to immediately. See my uterus before I did. Oh yeah. I know you pretty well, Nikki. I know you pretty well. <laughs> I know you in and out. <laughs> Get it? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. They showed me pictures of her tumor and also like the endometriosis that she had removed. But I do remember the doctor saying very clearly like the tumor is less likely to come back, but the endometriosis is like definitely going to come back. Um, and yeah. so you, t you said that that has already started to happen. Um, did you have, Oh yeah. how are you? I'm, I'm curious about this. So after you had your surgery, was your cycle, um, delayed or was it affected by the surgery at all? Um, did it take a while to kind of get things settled and then you shared your, you're having pain again. So when did that pain start again? Yeah, I, it was actually kind of funny. I think that maybe and of course, there's a healing time. So when I got back home from the hospital, I immediately was bleeding. But I think that that was just from the surgery and like my body was getting rid of everything that was inside, I guess. I don't know. But I think it took maybe like th about three months for me to feel a little bit more normal because, um, you know, that's that's like they cut open my uterus. Right. Um, and you know, I, I just wanted to give my body times so anything that felt weird. I was like, well, I'm still healing and you know, it takes a while. So, I mean, things were, things felt different, but sometime last year I started getting terrible cramps again and I was in the middle of the school day. And I was like, I can't make it. I was using, like, I was like pressing on like tables and like things to help myself stand up because I couldn't even like stand. And then like I had recess duty and I was like hobbling to recess duty. And I told Aww. my friend, I was like, I'm in so much pain, uh, a coworker. And she's like, you need to go home. So I walk with, I walk with someone to my principal's office to like talk to him just so that he can know that I need to take a sick day. And I walk in his office and I was like, my endometriosis is back. <laughs> 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 my principal knows all about my period issues. He certainly <laughs> does. He has been so kind. <laughs> well, when I you just, live uh, where you work, yeah. <laughs> It's a boarding school, so everyone knows everything. Yes. So he was he was very kind about it and like asked if someone needed to walk me home or you know, but I thankfully I'm able to take sick days if I need to when I'm in that much pain. Um, but yeah, that's I was just in so much pain that just came right out of my mouth. Endometriosis is back. I'm in pain. <laughs> um, so, and it's not, um, it's not every month, but there are definitely months where I'm like unable to do things since getting my surgery. So I'm, I don't know. I, I don't know. Like I, my doctor hasn't told me, I see the endometriosis. I do need to go back for an appointment, but, um, 
but sometimes I'm like, yeah, I think it's it's got to be back because I'm like in pain again. Lots of it. But I do try and I do try and like get get to the pain before it gets me by taking pain medicine that my doctor's given me. And uh, sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. I would love it to work all the time, but it's <laughs> helpful when it is when it's helpful, you know. Yeah. And I'm really happy to hear, you know, how open you are able to be with your boss. I know that it's uh, unique circumstances. You're isolated in a foreign country. Um, it's a boarding school. Um, you know, just being a part of the expat community. It's, I, I find that a lot of uh, dynamics, work dynamics, friendship dynamics, um, when you're experiencing being, you know, an expat are just a bit different than I'd say a lot of things are handled um, wherever you're home is like you know I don't feel that there'd be um a lot of reasons you know in America um or a lot of opportunities rather for your boss to, your boss or your coworkers to know you as well as they do when you're an expat and so I know when Nikki was mm -hmm. going through her surgery I know the whole school was so supportive all the staff yeah. um you know really uh you know rallied around Nikki I even remember, you know, texting one of her coworkers, like an update, um, when Nikki went into surgery, um, you know, and for prayers uh, for Nikki and, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. that coworker sent an email to the whole school, you know, and the whole school <laughs> yes. was there yes. like thinking and praying for Nikki, which was so thoughtful. So I'm really, really yes. happy that, you know, knowing your circumstances, not only is your boss so supportive of you and making sure that you feel okay, but that you can just walk into his office and say like, my endometriosis came back. Cause <laughs> honestly, we, that's the goal. You know, we want people to have yeah. work environments that are so comfortable that you can go walking in and you can tell your boss the truth, you know, like I'm in so much menstrual pain or whatever it may be. So right. for someone like you, Nikki, you know, let's say like you were not at a school with this kind of particular dynamic where everyone really is knows each other and, and knows what they're going through. For someone like you and for people like you who go through so much pain, like what would the ability in, a, in your contract to have one or two days of menstrual leave a month, what would that mean to you? Well, it's just like you get your period every month, you know? And so it's, if someone is like me and they have so much pain, it's important to have days that you know that are set aside that if you can't work because you're in pain or you might like puke in the middle of whatever you're doing or you know it's important to have those days because you know they're coming <laughs> it's not like maybe I'll get sick it's not like um like for me I might not get sick for a whole school year that would be amazing but I will get my period every month that's not I mean, unless I get pregnant, but you know, that's a whole other thing. Um, so it's not something that it's like, I hope I don't get sick. It's will get my period. I just hope it's not as painful as it usually is, you know? So, so it's not something that you can control by like, I'm going to wash my hands or whatever. Um, and you can't control getting sick either, but, um, yeah. I know it's coming. <laughs> you sure do. So it, it is important. It is important. And, you know, I haven't been I haven't been as open about my period or the pain that I am in always. I, you know, I remember years ago, like, especially when I was a, a lot younger and like in high school and in college, I, it was really hard for me to describe to people why I couldn't do things. I, I think I would just repeat over, I'm just in lots of pain. I'm in a lot of pain. And then I, I wouldn't go beyond that because there was just like, I was just unable to, I, I didn't know how to say it because I was afraid. And I think that's so silly now that I look back on it, but I think that there is shame involved with uh, periods and, and it shouldn't be like that. It should be as, as easy as, you know, walking in and saying, um, I'm, I'm in lots of period pain. My endometriosis is back, you know? So yeah, I and sometimes I, I remember like mumbling under my breath, I have cramps, but then I wouldn't like 
go beyond <laughs> that. And <laughs> I <Yeah>. have cramps, <laughs> you know, by the way, so, <laughs> by the way, <laughs> uh, but, but it's just, it happens every month and I can't control it. So I'm, I, uh, now I feel like when I tell people, especially men, <laughs> um, like if I'm in pain, I like look them in the eye and I'm like, I have cramps. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, like I'm yes. like challenging them or something, but I don't think I should feel like I have to like confront them either because it's just a fact of life. <laughs> it's literally like, just what's happening to your body. <laughs> cramps. <laughs> mm -hmm. That is like the most Nikki thing ever. And I love it. I'm going to steal that move, <laughs> Nikki. I'm going to take that one, put it in the back pocket. That is a power move, honestly. Yes. That is a power move. Like, <laughs> I'm going to test you right now. Are you going to squirm? Because I'm squirming from my cramps <laughs> that I'm experiencing. That's right. <laughs> I'm squirming right now. <laughs> <laughs> Nikki, thanks so much for sharing a lot about um, your period pain and your heavy flow, your surgery, your endometriosis. I know that's, um, you know, pretty personal. And I think it takes a lot of vulnerability to share that information, you know, um, in order to help educate others and to bring comfort to others who experience similar um, symptoms as you do. So I just wanted to thank you again for bringing that up today. I'm happy to share. I think that there's more it's more common definitely than people talk about sometimes yeah definitely i completely agree um you know when we talk about the the really nitty-gritty the more painful details of periods it's it's really helping to normalize it for people and to mm -hmm. make other people aware that yeah there's a whole group of people out here existing fitting in blending in every day mm -hmm. and they're going through a tremendous amount of pain so i think it's good to bring awareness to that to people who don't know what that feels like right yeah exactly now nikki we've talked a lot about how your periods affected you recently and you know as you were growing up but i am definitely curious about the first day that you got your period because i don't know this story at all so i'm pretty curious about this i would like you to paint me a picture what was that day like what was that like for you okay well in fifth grade, my parents got divorced. Um, so I feel like I have to preface my story with that. And I would switch houses every week. So uh, one week I would live at my mom's house. The next week I would live at my dad's house. And I remember there was a time period after my parents got divorced that my dad would take us, like me and my sister, on like... Um, to like barbecues on weekends and like we didn't know any of these people that I don't I don't I don't know you know, they were his friends we didn't know any of them but like we would go to these barbecues in like random places and um it was one of those weekends that he took us to some sort of barbecue that there were a bunch of people it was outside it was summertime and like I started not feeling good and I was like oh no what's what's going on with my body and like I realized I was getting my period and like there was blood coming out of me <laughs> and I was like um what do I do I'm in this random person's house like I think there was a porta potty outside oh, and no. a I porta potty well wait no listen though like I was like I'm not going in there <laughs> um, but we were, we were at somebody's house and I think they were spending the night at their house. Um, I just remember like being in their house. I wasn't, I didn't, I don't know who they were. Um, and I was bleeding and I was like wrapping toilet paper around my underwear. Like what's, what's going on? And I was like crying and I wouldn't leave the bedroom that we were staying in. And my dad was like, I don't know what's going on. And I wouldn't tell him either. Like, I was oh. like, I'm not telling him. And so I was like on the phone, like tears talking to my mom, like, mom. And she was like, well, let me talk to your dad. So then I like gave, gave my dad the phone. And then he was like, oh, okay. And then he left. And then he went and talked to the like lady whose house it was. And then she went and she got some like 
giant maxi pad. <laughs> and she was like, here, hon. And then she just handed it to me. And I was like, what do I do with this? <laughs> um, oh, my gosh. I, I, but then I was confused because, like, I was only bleeding a little bit. And I was like, this giant pad is dumb. I'm not <laughs> bleeding that much. Um, and then I think I, I think I, I don't know what I did with the pad, but I think I opted for just using Raps toilet piper around my underwear. <laughs> <laughs> and I like spent the rest of that, the rest of that time. I the rest of that time is like erased from my memory. But like I was like, this pad is too big. I think I, I don't know if I tried it on, and I was like, this is weird. And then I just used toilet paper, and it and the first time it never got that heavy. It was just a little bit, and so the toilet paper actually was okay. Yeah. But I was so anxious and like I wasn't in my own house and mm -hmm. I didn't know how to use a pad they didn't like show me or tell me how they just handed it to me um and so it was very stressful and it, like it just man I'm glad I know how to use a pad now <laughs> You certainly do. You certainly do. That's so funny. You know, it's like, it's funny. Why do people almost forget that young menstruators, they don't know how to use a pad. Like if you hand it to them, they don't know what, it, they don't know. I think because, you know, for people who menstruate, obviously like you and I, it's like second nature at this point. We know how it works. We know how to open the pad. We know how it works. It's just like, boom, boom, boom. You'd, every month you're using them, right? So, but it's funny because I had someone else share too that they were given a pad and they put it on incorrectly because they had no idea like how to use it. You know, I feel like there's a lot of talk about, you know, how to use a tampon, but honestly, even pads have a learning curve. You got to know, you have to be taught mm -hmm. how to use it, even like wings and things like that. And man, it's so funny because my first guest also mentioned being handed a, a massive maxi pad on her <laughs> very first day of her first period. And there's actually no shame about maxi pads. Like I'm a maxi pad queen. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> but when your period is so light, it's so, it's not appropriate. Like it's just so like, right. you don't massive need that, for no reason. You know? Yeah. I was in such a state of like anxiety and stress and being so uncomfortable. Maybe the lady whose house it was did try and show me, but I think I was, I, I don't know what happened. I think that it was just so embarrassing for me. Mm. I didn't want to talk to anyone, you know? Yeah. And yeah, so I, I, I guess I did it. I was just like, I'm going to figure it out, you know? <laughs> yeah, just kind of like, just stay in your own zone. Did you, you know, you mentioned feeling embarrassed. Do you have any memories of, you know, why did you feel embarrassed? Did you have a good sense of, you know, how society viewed periods? Had anything happened? Have you heard anyone talk about them? Or uh, where do you think that embarrassment came from? I, I don't know. I think I was... I think I was just surprised because I, I hadn't really, I don't remember talking that much about periods with anyone before I got my period. Um, I don't remember learning about it. I don't really remember talking about it. I remember my, when my older sister got her period, she told me that like, oh, it's nothing to worry about. It just comes out in drips. Like, like it's not, it's, it's going to be okay. And so like that gave me a little bit of comfort because I was mortified when I first heard like, you're going to have blood coming out of you every month. Um, but she, she was like, don't worry. It's just going to be drips. I was like, okay. Uh, in my case, not so much, <laughs> but, but it, at least, you know, hearing my sister tell me it's not so bad that that gave me comfort. Uh, but but that's the only memory I have of anyone talking to me about periods is my sister telling me she got hers mm -hmm. and that's it. <laughs> yes. I, and so I don't know. I think like getting my period for the first time was a surprise because no one ever talked to me about it too much. So, mm -hmm. and maybe because it hadn't been talked about, there was a sense of um, being embarrassed because that I had to talk about it 
but I didn't want to talk about it because no one ever talked about it with me. Yeah, that totally makes sense. And I'm curious too, I know you grew up on a farm. You said this person at the porta potty was this like at a farmhouse? Is that why they didn't have like a bathroom? No, no. Okay. So they had a, ha- they had a bathroom inside their house, but I oh. think they rented a porta potty because oh. the party was really big. <laughs> okay. You know, that makes you know sense. Okay. sometimes if, yeah, I, it, yeah, I think that the party was so big. They're like, we need a porta potty. So you're telling me that you got your very first period at a massive house party of someone's that you didn't even know. And the woman you don't even know gave you your first pad. Yes, that is exactly <laughs> what happened. No wonder my period's <laughs> taking revenge out on me. <laughs> it was cursed from the beginning. <laughs> oh, Nikki. Uh, man, and being away from your mom, too, it must have been really tough that day. Yes, it was, because I'm sure that that I would have been more comfortable. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And, you know, like, I think everyone's family dynamic is a bit different, but I think typically our dad is not the first person we want to go to when we get our period. Like, I don't, right. I don't have right. a lot of memories of my dad interacting with me when it came to period anything. Do you know what I mean? So um, mm-hmm. I reflect on my first period, which was very chill, not dramatic. It was just what it was. Mm-hmm. But my mom was there, you know, if my mom wasn't there, it might've been a little different. Cause I feel like I would have felt like, Oh, I don't know if I would have like felt comfortable telling my dad outright what had just happened, you know? So um, right. not having your right. mom with you there, like not having your mom there with you that day, I'm sure that was pretty tough. Just, you know? Yeah. And you know, as, as I've gotten older, my dad knows all about my period now. Oh, sure, um, yeah. all like like I tell him dad I have cramps like obviously I don't live with him now but mm-hmm. when I have been staying with him in the past if I'm not feeling well or like he knows exactly what's going on <laughs> yeah I think with periods as intense as yours it, it would be hard to keep it a secret in your own home yeah exactly and you know when I when I can't even like stand up or when when all I want to do is lay in bed because I'm in so much pain. You're right. It's I, you can't hide what's going on because that would be some high pain tolerance if you did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it would be so intense, and and no one wants to live like that. And then I'm sure there are people though who like live in homes where they it's not a, like a, a safe environment to talk about their periods right. and they're going through intense stuff and. I really feel for people like that because I can't imagine mm-hmm. just during your period, you just want to feel as comfortable as possible. And that also in- includes being open about what's going on in your body. Yes, absolutely. Definitely. And Nikki, I think it's funny that you mentioned this maxi pad in the story because it seems that everyone who shared that story with me so far, their first period was always handed a massive maxi pad. I just think that's hilarious. And um, I'm just curious. So what was your like... Um, the evolution of you choosing your period products. What was the first one that was like kind of your go-to and then how have you moved on to different products? Um, Cause I know you're like one of the first people who encouraged me to get period underwear, which is like my favorite thing now. It's my go-to, especially being a stay at home mom. I, I especially like it, you know, it's environmentally friendly and it's more comfortable. So I'm definitely curious about when did you go from pads into period underwear? I know you have like reusable pads. I would like to know that story. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so when, you know, when I was first starting to use period products, cause I got my period, my, my mom showed me the, the brand of pads that she liked and so I was just like okay great like I'm gonna use pads and so I just I only used pads but you know when you're on your period you are always nervous about you know am I gonna leak am I like I can't wear those you know white shorts that I have or whatever and I had a friend who would ask me will you check my butt and uh so you know we would check each other's butts (laughs) and Um, so, so I, but I would still just use pads and, um, I, it never, it never interested me to use tampons because I don't really want to stick anything up there. So, um, and yes, so (laughs) I, like, I, 
have continued to use pads, but as I like found different brands that I like, um, I was getting really like irritated. My like, I was getting irritated down there. And so my doctor was like, well, try and use all natural or like chlorine free pads. And you know, that, that was helping. So I try and get the more like just like cotton ones, but then, um, then when my period started getting very heavy, I was struggling to find pads that would hold the amount of blood that it needed to without overflowing. So I started buying like the extra, extra, super maxi, extra long. And in Taiwan, you can, you, it tells you how long your pad is on the package. I don't know if I've seen that in the U S but it will literally tell you how long in centimeters it is. So Mm -hmm. like I would find the one with the highest amount of centimeters (laughs) and, you know, um, sometimes buying pads can be difficult here because they have scented ones and in the u.s they have scented ones girl the scented pads the scented pads it's a real it's a real experience here in taiwan (laughs) um the first time i bought pads in taiwan there was um it was like just i i just bought one that looked you know fine yeah. Um, and maybe I should have used Google Translate, but I didn't. And I opened it and it looked like there was like an herb packet, like inside the pad. And like the whole pad was green and this strong herb flavor, not flavor, like scent flowed up from the pad. And I was like, that's weird. So <laughs> I used it anyway. It was fine, but I didn't want to buy those again. Since then, I've found pads that don't have sense here but I always just like I always buy the exact same ones because I've tried to like veer off and try other ones just in case there's better ones yeah then I accidentally buy the mint ones (laughs) oh that is the worst experience ever it's like (laughs) menthol in your pad and you put it on I think I lasted 15 minutes before the burning sensation was no. unable to bear. And I like, I, I think I kept that like box of pads in my cabinet for like a year because I was like, do I throw it away? That's so wasteful. Do I give it to someone? I would not wish that on anyone though. So I did end up throwing them away. That was so terrible, but yes. so. Over the years, like I think I ran, I ran track when I was in high school, and like, Mm -hmm. of course, like apparently sports are easier, and swimming is easier, and whatever is easier with tampons. But I just, I don't, I don't like them. I don't want to use them, and if I can live my life without them, I'm happy. Um, And I remember you tried to teach me how to use them. Um, I, (laughs) I was getting baptized and, you know, my church did like full immersion baptism and I had my period and I was like, how am I going to get baptized? I have my period. (laughs) And so, so you came over to my house, you brought all the sizes of tampons, you explained that you are so wonderful. And then you're like, you brought over coconut oil. And, you gotta lube it up, baby. You gotta lube it yes. up for the first time. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> then I go into the bathroom and you're standing outside the door. And I'm like, Karen, I can't do it. I can't do it. <laughs> you were so gracious. And you're like, that's okay. I think when, when I was getting ready to go in the water, I had, I think I had period underwear, underwear, swimsuit, bottoms, and shorts on like four layers I survived you survived although although the only thing I could think of (laughs) when I was getting baptized was I have like five layers of underwear (laughs) right now (laughs) (laughs) and then when I got into the water it was like air bubble air bubble air bubble (laughs) 
I'm glad someone <laughs> saw that. I mean, maybe they, maybe everyone in the congregation. Yeah, who knows? <laughs> maybe Todd so, was like, "What's going on? <laughs> What's going on?" That um, is so, so that's, funny. Like oh, it Mickey. was more of a my mind is on how many pairs of underwear I'm wearing. But back to the products I use because my period <laughs> got <laughs> because my period got so heavy pads weren't enough yeah and I had a friend that I was talking to about it and she she told me well why don't you just try period underwear like it's a good way of protection and you know you don't have to just use them by themselves you can use uh pads with them and so they they were really helpful for me when I got them and now like I wear period underwear throughout my whole time on my period but because of the amount of times that I've like overflowed in public, I always wear a pad with them unless I'm at home. Um, and it just, just those mortifying experiences of um, getting blood everywhere, like in a classroom or like sharing a room with someone and, um, or, you know, whatever. So I, I am thankful to have the period underwear. Has it saved me all the time? No, I still have overflowed with period underwear and pad, but mm. uh, it's definitely improved my life to use them for sure. Yeah, definitely. It, it totally makes sense because it must be that nice extra security. Like do, wearing two pads doesn't quite do anything. You're almost blocking the pad, but a pad with period underwear, it's almost like a, like this, this almost foolproof kind of way of doing it. Um, right. So I know that you work at a boarding school and so you live on campus. Um, has mm -hmm. that been helpful to you? Um, you know, being able to work somewhere where you live, are you able to go and change your underwear and your pads during the school day? So I, I do live very close to my classroom. I live on the campus. And if I, I have had times where I like before school starts or, you know, um, during one of my planning times where I, I have to run home and change. And like that is that actually is a blessing for me because um, there's been times where I've worked at other schools that I don't live as close and I had to run home and that takes a lot of time. Um, if you live far, thankfully I didn't live too far from where I worked before, but, um, you know, just like, Oh, surprise, got to change. Um, and I guess it would be a good idea to have like a good change, like an extra change of clothes, but sometimes you don't think about that all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It must be like, for me with my cycle, I'm, I've am i never had to consider bringing a, a change of clothes with me anywhere because of my period. Is that something that you often have had to think about? Oh my goodness. I, it, that kind of blows my mind because I've had so many instances where I needed a change of clothes. Um, and I actually don't know if I've brought, I think I, on my period, sometimes I'll carry an extra pair of underwear with me. Um, but I have rarely packed an extra change of clothes. I have done it before. Um, or like a jacket that I'm like, if I overflow, I can tie this jacket around my waist, you know, the classic jacket around the waist. Yes, that's <laughs> right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And like even getting into people's cars, as you know, as I've said before, I asked you, if I might bleed on your car. Yeah. But I have like. I will get anxiety sometimes, like if I'm on my period and go in someone's car, I'll usually bring a jacket so I can sit on it so that I don't bleed on their car. <laughs> um, I try and be discreet as possible so that yeah. they don't know I'm trying to avoid bleeding on their car. But uh, <laughs> what's she doing back there? Is she trying to Why is she not on bleed? Her jacket? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yes. Well, Nikki, you've talked a lot about how intensely heavy your flow is, and I'm sorry that you have such a heavy flow to the point where it's just, it can cause a lot of issues in your life. And, you know, being someone who has, I think, you know, I would define my period as pretty um, standard, um, pretty 
what the textbook says and all of that. Um, and I still have leakage issues. I even just like leaked in my bed two days ago. And I was like, what is going on here? I am 30 years old. <laughs> like, come on. But you know what? It's, it's life as a menstruator. You're gonna leak. It is life. Um, so do you have any interesting leaking, staining stories? Because it sounds like you're working with a lot of blood. I have lots of stories. Uh, <laughs> but one of them, one of them is very memorable. I think I, I think that this is when my the tumor started to grow. Uh, mm -hmm. It was a couple of years before I had to get the surgery. And I was accompanying I was chaperoning a trip to Italy with some students and on the plane over to Italy, I realized, Oh no, I have my period. Good thing. Like, and I, I knew it was going to happen. So I like had packed everything I needed and like made sure I took like pain pills and like all of those things. Cause the last thing you want to do is be in pain with your period on a plane. And we get to Italy, we get in our hostel um, we had like 30 students and, uh, we were, it was me and a few other teachers and the trip leader, the lead teacher had asked me and one of my coworkers and friends, if we would share a room and if it was okay, because he like, he was, a, the other teacher was a man and we were like, oh yeah, that's fine. No big deal. So we get into our room and, uh, it's a bunk bed. And I told, <laughs> I told my coworker that he had oh, to no. sleep on the top bunk. <laughs> he's like this really big guy. He was the PE teacher. Um, he played football. He, and I was like, you're sleeping on the top bunk. I'm sleeping on the bottom bunk. And, and we was like, know he why. Was, <laughs> he was so kind and like, yeah, that's fine. Like he, a great person to travel with. And, um, so that night it was also a hostel. I didn't know that some hostels did this until this hostel that in the morning you have to strip your own bed and bring it, bring all the sheets down and like put it in a pile. So, um, we knew we had to do that in the morning and I, woke up at like three in the morning. I had blood on my shirt, covering no. my shirt, my pants. I had gotten it on the top sheet, on the bottom sheet. There was blood everywhere except oh for my God. pillow. Everywhere <sighs> except for my pillow. Like in my sleep, my body was like, let's have a party. <laughs> and was in pain because I, I had woken up. Oh. Nikki. because pain and and I had blood everywhere except oh, for my pillow my gosh. and I'm like I'm texting my mom I'm mortified because <sighs> here I am in this bunk bed with my male co-worker and there's blood everywhere and so in the middle of the night I'm up I'm in pain I take a shower because I am gross um and I put on new clothes and I like, I'm like hobbling over the sink and I wash all of the blood out of the sheets oh with gosh. the little like soap that was in the bathroom. And then I like throw the sheets underneath the sink. And because it was a hostel, they had like, I guess they had 24 hours, someone at the desk. So I went back downstairs and I was like, can I please have new sheets? And the man working at the working at the front desk he like gave me like the side eyebrow and said why do you need new sheets and then stared at me. me what and I said I just need new sheets <laughs> what I should have said is I got blood all over them because yeah. of my period but I did <laughs> not say that so he gave me new sheets and then I I like re put everything on the bed and then I took my towel and an extra an extra shirt and I laid it where like my abdomen and everything was so that I didn't bleed over everything again and for like the next three or four days of the trip I was hoping that my coworker didn't 
didn't look and see how many layers of towels I was laying on my bed to sleep on top of. <laughs> oh. and, um, in the morning when we were changing the sheets, I told him, hey, I'm going to I'm going to take the sheets that are in the in the bathroom downstairs. So don't worry about those. Cause he was like, Oh, I'll take all our sheets down. And I was like, great, but I'll take the ones in the bathroom. And he, he looked at me and said, no, I'm taking all the sheets down. And I told him <laughs> like, no, 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 it's okay. Like I'll get the ones in the bathroom. And he went into the bathroom and grabbed them. And was like, I'm taking the sheets down. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> so, oh. so I was like, okay. <laughs> And he did. It was fine. And uh, yeah, that was that was quite an experience. That was the <sighs> first time that it was so, so heavy. And like, because I wasn't used to my period being that heavy. Mm. Um, but that was the first time that it really was that heavy. Um, wow. Yeah, that was that I was so thankful because the trip was two weeks long. I was so thankful that my period didn't last that. But it ended eventually <laughs> during the trip. <laughs> oh, thank God. Uh, because that that would have, I mean, it was stressful enough to have my period on the trip. I was kind of nervous that it was gonna uh, mess with mess with my ability to be a chaperone. But oh, mostly definitely. the issues were just at night, which I guess was a blessing. Still wasn't helpful, but mm -hmm. so yeah, oh, yeah. My gosh. There was another time when I was working at a different school, and we had to the school we both worked at, yeah, um, and we had to proctor tests and the test schedule was always like very elaborate and mm -hmm. the testing times were like an hour and a half long. And, um, I had finished testing and then like emergency, they asked me to proctor, uh, some sort of AP exam. And I was like, okay, I will, I'll proctor it. And it was like an hour and a half long. And in that, like, I don't know if it was the middle but, you know, when we're proctoring the test, we can't leave the room. Yeah. And I, sometime during that test, my body was like, not today. And oh, no. I had the worst cramps. Like, oh. I, but I, I was in so much pain and I was bleeding so heavily. I got blood all over the teacher's chair that the, the room it was in. Oh, and Mickey. I like had blood all over my clothes and I just I was hoping the students didn't notice because I was like at that point standing at the door waiting for the person because we would have another teacher roam the halls in case you know someone needed to go to the bathroom or yeah. like students needed to get up and go somewhere and that person just never they, they just took so long to show up mm -hmm. I think I waited for like 20 minutes and I was like I need to leave um and so I was able to go to the bathroom, but I wasn't able to go and change. Thankfully, I had brought my jacket with me to, you know, tie around my waist. Um, <laughs> so, but that was a awful experience. After that was, mm. after that was, after that test was over, I went up and talked to one of my friends who was another teacher and she helped me like get like some like Lysol spray and we cleaned everything up and like then I went home and changed and man sometimes I wonder like how did blood get there you know because <laughs> like I was wearing a dress and like there was like a big blood spot down by where like my knees were and I was like why <laughs> how <laughs> how is that happening you know so uh, I'm so confused about how you got <laughs> blood on your chest in Italy well, it was like it was like my stomach area oh, okay. but like it's still but pretty how? high <laughs> where did it where, you know like blood on my shirt on my pants everywhere you're doing like an internal dance in your sleep you know yes I was just I going was everywhere getting down man <laughs> that is intense oh I didn't know that happened to you during one of our proctoring days that's Oh yes. I was just going to say that I was, those proctoring days at the school we taught at were so brutal because yeah, when you're proctoring, there'd be someone who would walk the halls, but their job was, it was boring and people didn't always need to go to the bathroom. So they would do a, a round and then they would sit and work on stuff for like 15 or 10 minutes and then come back. But I remember like when I was pregnant and I had to pee all the time, that was horrible. That was like one of the worst proctoring days of my life. So I can't imagine being like double, double or in pain. 
bleeding. Oh, I feel so sad, Nikki. I never knew that happened to you. That's it's honestly yes. traumatic because like you don't really, you know, we're here to break the stigma, um, but it's still intense when you're like a teacher and there's students and yes. you know that students talk and you don't want it to become this thing that it doesn't need to be. Um, right. You know, right. And, it sounds like our students were really great and I'm sure that, you know, it wouldn't, they would have handled it really well. Um, and I know that you and I both don't have problem talking about it, but still it just feels very vulnerable when you're at work and something like that happens, especially when there's not mm -hmm. resources available for you to take care of yourself. Right. Um, we're not right. supposed to be put in situations where we are trapped and bleeding profusely, you know? Um, right. And I think that proctoring schedule, it was a complete oversight to people who menstruate, um, as a yes. lot of things are. Um, because truly, if you're on your period, you can't guarantee if, you're, if your workers are uh, menstruating and then you're not providing guaranteed opportunities to go relieve yourself or clean yourself up. Um, you know, that's, it's a stressful thing for people who menstruate. And I'm sure for you as someone who bleeds as much as you do, it wasn't even just the stress of dealing with the pain, but the fact that you're doing it at work and public in front of students, you're not sure if you can clean yourself up. I'm sorry right. I went through that. You're that unable sucks. to leave a room. <laughs> and then yes. I also was like worried about, I have to like shimmy facing the students across the yeah. room to get to the door, you know, cause otherwise, you know, I didn't know how big the blood spot was, but I knew sure. it was there. Yeah, exactly. Oh, Nikki, I'm really sorry you went through that. Oh my goodness. That's so Ooh, tough. Makes for a good story though. <laughs> it sure does. <laughs> Nikki, I've so enjoyed talking to you today. And before we go, I want to ask you something that I always like to ask my guests before they leave the show. And that is... If you could offer some advice to someone who hasn't started their period yet, what would it be? It would be that every day we are interacting with people who menstruate, they might even be on their periods in the moment. And so it's something that goes on in everyday life and it's normal and, um, and it's okay. And one thing I've learned that has helped me is that People are experiencing what I'm experiencing, but the only way that I know that is by talking about my experiences. So being able to talk about it with people has been helpful and has helped me realize that I'm not alone. So being willing to talk about it with people and realize that it's something that there are people experiencing every day and it's okay. That's wonderful, Nikki. I think, you know, that's what this podcast is all about. You know, when we talk about our periods, we're making sure that people aren't feeling isolated mm -hmm. in their own period experiences. Mm -hmm. The more that we share our own experiences, the easier it is for us to create a period community. It also draws attention to the fact that these are, you know, these are things that a lot of people are experiencing. And yet there is so little accommodation for people who are experiencing menstruation. And a lot of it's because we have been, you know, silenced into shame about our periods. And since we don't talk about our issues, people don't know they exist. Therefore, there's not a problem and no adjustments need to be made. The more we talk about this, mm -hmm. the more that people, especially people who don't menstruate, can be really aware that this is a very universal thing for half the population that affects us on a daily basis for once a month. Right. So that's right. That's what we got to keep talking about it. Exactly. Right. And you know, you never know whose story you're going to touch. Right. So someone could be feeling really alone and isolated their experience and just you sharing Nikki, some of the stories you shared today, there could be someone out there who's going to hear that and really feel mm -hmm. like, Oh, it's not just me. Exactly. You know, and that's a big thing. So I really appreciate you coming here. Yes, and sharing thank everything. you. Thank you. Yeah, the more I talked about my pain or the tumor that I had, the more people shared with me their experiences and ways that they related to my experience as well. So I really appreciated being here on the show with you today. This was so fun. Thank you so much. Yes. Of course. And, you know, I'm really happy that I can give people 
um, like you, Nikki, to, a platform to speak about their period praying. Uh, sorry, I'm really happy that I could be here to give a platform to people like you, Nikki, to talk about period pain and endometriosis, um, especially because that's outside of my own experience. And I think your experience is one that definitely, definitely needs to be heard and understood by menstruators and people who don't menstruate. So thanks for being so vulnerable and sharing the nitty gritty. You're, you have amazing stories and I know there's more. <laughs> so like, I'm gonna have to have you back. You're gonna have to come back. Sorry, no choice. You're gonna have to come back because this was just so much fun, Nikki. And I'm glad people could, you know, get to know you a little bit better. My pleasure. <laughs> Nikki, before we go, I wanted to say that Nikki is an artist and I was going to ask you, is there anything you'd like to promote today? And um, where can people find your artwork? Yes, people can find my artwork on Instagram. My Instagram name is Rosie Rejoicing. And what I, what I do is I create artwork mostly of women's bodies and I embroider hair on them. Um, I am a hairy person and I want to just create a place that, that shares that it's okay to be a woman and have hair like, like hair that is okay. That's natural. And I just want to make artwork that celebrates that and puts it in a beautiful light rather than how society puts it in like dirty or unclean or that kind of thing because we naturally have hair that grows out of our bodies <laughs> yes we sure do i love your hairy women art as we like lovingly call it between each other hairy yeah women, hairy, hairy lady, lady. i <laughs> I've got a few pieces around my home because I'm just obsessed <laughs> and Nikki is going to start selling her art at some point. I don't think you're ready to launch yet, but That's give right. Nikki a follow on Instagram at Rosie Rejoicing so you guys can keep up with her artwork. It's really amazing. And if you are a fan of this podcast, I think you'll be a fan of her artwork. It really is just so unique. And to see her beautiful watercolors with the embroidered hair, it's it's so cool. So Nikki, I hope that you enjoyed being here today. It was just such a pleasure having you. You know, you're such a dear friend to me. I appreciate your support in me starting this podcast and I just can't wait to have you back. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here. <laughs> Thank you so much, Nikki. Thank you so much for listening to talk about your period. Be sure to subscribe to my podcast. And if you liked what you heard, please consider leaving a kind review. If there is anyone you know who would enjoy or benefit from listening to this podcast, please spread the word. You can follow Talk About Your Period on all social media platforms, where I recap previous episodes and share information about upcoming guests. Do you have a story to share? Go to talkaboutyourperiod.com to fill out my interest form and let's get you on the podcast. I hope this podcast inspires you to talk about your period with others. After all, it's just blood. I would like to thank my guests today, and I would also like to thank my editor, Neil Titus, for editing this episode and creating the show music. Don't forget to subscribe to talk about your period on your favorite podcast streaming platform, and I'll talk to you next time.